We appreciate your patience. Welcome to The Truth. We've been having some fun here in the studio. We're joined by Pease De La Riz, who is in the wings, ready to chirp anyone and anything. Especially Marco. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it here first? Yeah. Uh, we have the freshly Twittered, Ma- at Maddie Kirouac. Twittered. Is that what it's called? Twittered? Tweeted? Twittered? I don't know. Tweedled. Twaddled. Twaddled? It's, it's, it's late enough we can make these jokes because we know <laughs> no one's watching anyways. Uh, except for Ryan. Hey, except hey, for Ryan. Uh, with that in mind, um, our if best goes out to... Live. If you want to tweet the show live, at Eagle FPF, because no one will. No. Um, and you'll probably get a mention on air. Unfortunately, our one prize for the night has already been given out. That's not a joke. Tune in earlier. We give away things. Um... Other than that, best goes out to Vince, who is on his back right now. Yeah, hopefully yeah well, soon, buddy. And we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, first game of the docket, Cold Fusion, supremely confident, went into this game, ended up losing it 15-18 uh, to Le Monsieur Shah. Uh, both QBs held to two touchdowns. Uh, Lavallee, two touchdowns, two interceptions. Chintomo, two touchdowns, one interception. How surprised are you by this game? I'm not. Not at all. First of all, Prince being as confident as he was, I knew what was going to happen. And they're strong. It's the worst number six seed that you could play it, by far. I mean, I didn't want to play them, and look what happened. I, I'm not surprised at all, at all. At all. They've been steadily increasing, and as you can see, even with uh, Chintomo struggling at the pivot position. Well, that's not the, anything the, new. Yeah, the, the defense more than carried the load. You see, um, they had a full they had a full roster defensively. Bronco, Deschamps, oh. Pat, Pat Jerome, Chintomo, Jacques Void was even there. You, you you know it's serious when Jacques Void is showing up to the field. Well, that's it. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, th- these guys, their defense is going to carry them. This is like the the key thing where you say defense wins championships. Mm-hmm. This team, if they're going to go. Like I think they might, they might. It's going to be because of their defense for sure. We do have the the interesting matchups coming up. Uh, just to move on because we do have a lot of games to cover before we start predicting and coming up with these wild accusations that we always do. Legends forty six, uh, FFF thirty six in a, in a really really interesting game. Uh, they came out with the win despite Nardone being on his back for the for the bulk of it. Unfortunately, um, had to be taken off the field. From what I, well, I wasn't there, but uh, from what I understood, it was out of reach pretty, pretty quickly. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what to say. I, I thought that Nate was going to pull it out. It, it, it did come down to two key interceptions, one of which being for six from Corey Pecker. Um, really delivering on both sides of the ball, being stalwart defensively. And finding the right receivers when, when the time came on offense as well. I mean, you see he spread the ball. Robbie Pecker, right. Ryan Lewandowski, Dave Chidiat all respectively had two touchdowns in this game. Um, Nate Taylor doing well, but just coming a little bit short. Do you think that we're going to see an, a return of Nate Taylor in coming seasons as quarterback the way he was on the Buckeyes, oh, yeah. Texas All-Star? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's going to bring this team back now, I guess, Unless they want to bring Benny back as a receiver, because he's definitely I, Benny has been an, an absolute solid center. I don't know if it's if it's his preference or if he's even able to. Like he, it, it yeah. was something. No, that but he, Nate Nate's definitely able to. I'm, I don't know if he's thinking about it for spring. I doubt it, but maybe next winter. I think he's capable. For sure, I, I would have thought it, it would have been really interesting if the idea of the whole Division A would have a cap. That would be some things that you'd see, kind of the split up of Montreal's finest, where Division A does have a cap. It does have a cap. Yeah, it does have a cap. Okay, yeah. so then that that is something to keep in mind that the finest may not be able to field the roster as is, and seeing teams they don't that are really usually off. though. There's always people missing. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, the, in, the another very chemistry based game. I was I was very happy to see how this one unfolded because it shows that no one really is safe in Division Two. Uh, Gladiator taking it 40 to 37 over CLR forces. Um, Fritz P throwing five touchdowns, one interception compared to Frank Lebeau's five touchdowns, three interceptions. But the key stat did in the end come down to the uh, the rushing touchdown by Frank Lebeau. Um, really finding and showing that the chemistry of his team will win over just it's straight up skill. Absolutely down to FPF experience all the way through. We have a tweet in, by the way, at Vince Nardone, who shows that he is still at home, but um, 
at uh, Matt Kirai, you oh you can you can you can, I can read it handle okay yeah you I can, can read you it. can tag you in this now yeah you can tag me in it thanks for tagging me at Matt Kirai. I'm adding to the story Vince don't worry about it I'm adding to everything that you're not even gonna make a story in the end I know you but anyway and, I'm adding to it and not only that but you you just told me you can read it and didn't read the tweet you I didn't just read answered the tweet. yeah okay. I thought you. Oh, no. I'm reading for the people, the people <laughs> listening who don't see what oh, we yeah. see on the screen, uh, which was uh, Vince and I don't care. Rock, you better have some good questions for GM, referencing GM under fire. Everyone and no one's favorite topic thus far. Really? I, I don't know. No one. No one listens to the show. So I like it. Whatever. I made fun of Vince. And Vin, Vince wants me to undo one more button. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't start. Um. From here, where do seal our forces go? Come back next. Well, I don't know if they're gonna come back in spring, but I think Div B is definitely in their their I, realm. I don't think so. I think they would be. They're too strong for B. They would have to put themselves in A. And I know that the bulk of uh, Peace players will be playing in B already. On he's not even sitting here. He got up to take a take a leak or whatever. But he, they will be playing on Moose. On There's moose? a sort okay. of a, a buddies Moose merger. They could do well in Div A. With the cap? Yes, without a doubt. But then that's Guillaume. However, Martin. that moves Guillaume Ward and Bordage, Olivier Bordage, Bordage over. Binet. Yeah, that's that's their whole core right there. Yeah, no, I think they would probably come back as CLR forces for next winter and stay Div 2 and do some damage again. A little bit more experience. I mean, I don't know how much Fred Dupree has in, in FPF mm -hmm. as experience, but... They also, for the most part, were were a dominant dominant force in in the other flag leagues as well. There's a, there's another flag league that takes uh, place in Terrebonne. Um, they were really solid there, and then came over here to to try their hand against the top tier teams in flag. Yeah, I mean, we played them. They were good. I mean, it's I don't know. They could do some damage for sure next year, definitely. ONS really back. In, uh, Vince Nardone, CLR would get eaten up in A. Is his tweet in? I would love to see it. It would it would dilute Division A and really spread the talent around. So it would be something that would be really interesting to see. Just uh, where you really don't know from game to game who's going to do well. Don't know necessarily. I mean, Karim wasn't there when I played, but I didn't. Their defense wasn't anything to to boast about. It's but. like Vince is on the show. Nothing to boast about. Uh, the last game in Division Nailed Two. It. ONS 43 over Chernobyl Circus. After a little bit of chirp on the Facebook walls, Kevin Wyeth showed up and delivered. Um, Brian Larivier, his his go-to man, as always, looked incredibly promising. Pat Chenard looking a little bit more rattled than usual, just going uh, four and out. Throwing three, uh, three touchdowns, no interceptions, but just not being able to get it done. Well, it's like I said to Vince last week, or two weeks ago, you have to go at... Kevin's receivers. No matter what you do, you have to go at them. You have to be aggressive. And if you're not, he's just going to eat you up. It doesn't matter who's receiving for him. You have to be tight on them. And I'm sure they weren't. And look what happened. Destroyed. With that in mind, we get to the, the other really, really fun games. Um, a big upset in the making. Demons 42 over Rainmakers 32. And the Demons had a secret to this game. And I know you know it. So fill us in. They didn't drink. Before the game. <laughs> and considering uh, this core of players, it's it's a feat in and of itself, not just It's a party late. before yeah. the game. It's a party. And Paul said he had one drink that whole day. So good for you guys. See what happens when you don't drink? You win. I mean, it was watching the game. They were all of their tools meshing at together strength. at full strength. It was it was fun to watch and the rainmakers came in us underestimating them because they were 3 and 7 and <laughs> we we saw the fierceness as well of the demons defense you mentioned it as well Nasty. um adam champini being taken out of the game playing a little bit rough um having karm having a stellar game ryan hector being everywhere on the field at once we were mentioning a very very underrated and physical defender in division 1 the deeper the de the game got the more aggressive their defense got and it mm -hmm. was getting it was getting fierce out there, but they did what they needed to do, and they're going to have to step it up one more one more time next week to beat Flag One Sack. And that's going to be a very very interesting game, considering the last time these two teams played each other. And, and <laughs> yeah, we'll touch upon that a little bit more. Oh, we have a, we have a response now. <laughs> uh, eaten up? Don't think so. Have any of you really seen our game? 
I've watched the CLR Forces game, and Vince's response to that will be, yes, I watched that film game of the week, but wasn't there in which uh, they played Clockwork. You were there! I was there, yeah. I, I don't know how well they would do in Div A. Sorry, Fred, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I would honestly love to see it because whether or not they have Krim Bennett, whether or not they have Olivia well, they Bord, I think Bord, uh, Bennett, I think, would stay with the finest, but Ward and Bordage, That's their, I think, Yeah, their home is yeah, CLR. Exactly. Yeah. I, I would be really interested to see it, and it would be fantastic, in my opinion, not just for the league, but for their development as well. I know that they have they have the uh, their tournament that they host throughout the summer. I've played so it. So I, I don't know if they'd be able to devote their attention to it. <laughs> For those of you who are listening, we keep getting distracted, but there's a back and forth between Vince Nardone and Fred Zuppi, which will be interested to follow throughout. However, uh, we still have another game to recap. You were there, you know it intimately. <coughs> DK D-Boys, first time D-Boys are able to out DK in, uh, in the playoffs, and they did so handedly. Ryan Aridi out with a with an injury Vince Nardone out with an injury Serge However, Pilon out with an injury Serge Pilon out with an injury what do you take from this game I think Rajdi you, we all know that Rajdi is all about the mental game and seeing that all his keys his horses his horses were, were out of the game and then Ryan showing up after his game injured I think just mentally destroyed him and we prayed on that absolutely prayed on it we saw that he was rattled we made adjustments when they were beating us and he had no response he had zero response for us there's not, if you get into Raji's head you can win yeah and that's exactly what d-boys did especially coming up with big fourth down interceptions Ala Theo, just, a Leo. but not only that but it's just even on fourth down knowing how well the d-boys were just steamrolling that game just we know we can bat it down, but we're still going to intercept it. Just to just to put that jab. In the yeah, coffin. exactly, exactly. The more you get into Raji's head with picks, he was just making mistakes, overthrowing, mm-hmm. underthrowing. There was it drops. Was remin- there was it was drops. reminiscent of the Week One DKD Boys game. Yeah, where he, Vince even said that he was rattled from the get go. He was nervous. I don't know if he was necessarily nervous more than rattled because of the injuries, but you could see that we were in his head from the beginning. With that in mind, just before we go to our, our previews, I know you have some, some questions for me, or we hope, Vince hopes at least, because that means it was less work than he, that he had to do this week. Yeah, oh yeah, I got so. <laughs> With that in mind, GM under fire. I, I'm really glad, by the way, just just as a side note, that we have people listening to the show. <laughs> Is, so- it still- it's solely- Is it still going back and forth? Oh yeah. Oh man. Jeez. Okay. Are we ready? Yes. All right. Okay. So give me an X factor for each team left in D1. Okay. So um, right now, it's got for Flag Mossack, it's got to be Alex Neto Putes. Uh, yeah. The team will rise and fall around him. Um, for the Demons, it's going to be not Paula Pierre, but Sean Kennedy. I think that Sean Kennedy is a big X factor that's going to come up big when Paul is covered and Carmine needs to find that sure handed receiver. What about last game, Vinny? Last game, Vinny. I, I Vinny do like was, that. He it, was big in last game. It, it will all come down to because the games will start following each other. Vinny also has Division 4 where he'll, where he'll be focusing on as well and maybe not taking as big a role pre game in the warm ups and just the general core of the of the demons yeah. um remaining on the d-boys right now i think it's going to be antonio lani big motivator he's able to reel his team back in because he's very much a lead by example player um everywhere on the field will just will sacrifice his body to make that catch to make that uh defended pass and on the finest it's going to be someone wearing black and red it, it can be <laughs> anyone <laughs> all right with that in mind i would probably say i can more yeah okay all right so now on this camping trip me and nate are dead okay because we froze to death you're alone who do you not want to meet in the woods someone in fbf division one and two? Oh yeah um, <laughs> <laughs> the, thank you eagle has made my answer for me but it's 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 definitely gonna be anthony como um <laughs> He, that was he can. Fear in my voice. <laughs> it, you know, as a firefighter, he has ac- a, uh, access to an axe. Uh, he can push a tree trunk over uh, with with little effort. He's killed a man <laughs> <laughs> with a trident. 
Okay, best QB wide receiver combo left in the playoffs, Div 1 and 2. QB wide receiver in, in Div 1 and 2, do I, do I outline them respectively? No, no, just the best one. Okay, take away the finest because we all sure. know you're on their jock, but... And I'm not Don Shepard, too. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> whatever. No, Bet- no, no. For, for those of you, that's not actually Don Shepard. It's just... Uh, it sounds exactly like but him. But it, it sounds exactly like him. Um, I'm going to have to go with, with Division 2 first. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head who's who's more dangerous right now. I would think it would have to be... Nikola Chantomo and his brother, because not Jerome. Yeah. But he doesn't throw to Jerome as much as he as much as he should. Yeah, that's true. Um, whereas more more and more QBs in Division Two distribute the ball, he tends to focus on his brother. So that's that's who I would have to say in Division Two, and in Division One, uh, when it comes down to it, and you said not finest, it's it's got to be Marco to Jamal Gittens. Jamal is whenever you need a play, you just you just put it up. It's Jamal. Come on. Okay, I really hope you give the right answer to this one. But you're making a flag team. Mm-hmm. You can only choose FPF staff. Who's your last pick? Last pick? Like last pick? He's the last <coughs> guy. <Hold on. laughs> um, no, Duke. Dave De La Rocca is my last pick. <laughs> All right. Mokan and Mokan and Brent Calendar both get nods. Wow. 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 This is what haven't won championship in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? Nick Below. Oh, yeah, Nick Below. I don't know you guys. There you go. There we go. Nick Below is our last pick. <laughs> All right. Kate, not necessarily... Thank you for that. That, that, is, that is indeed my actual answer. Not necessarily to lead the demons, mm-hmm. but who's your preference as a QB? Robbie, Paul, or Carmen? Not necessarily to lead the team? Um, no, not necessarily. Just your preference out of the three. Because they do that play where all three of them drop. Oh yeah, the the, the double reverse. Um, I I still think it would be Carm at the end of the day. I like the fact that they have those options to come in if need be. Uh, it wasn't exactly the same team, but in the overnight tournament you saw like with the alcohols, alcoholics where they, they 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 traded QBs left, right, and center. But at the end of the day, you want Carm throwing the ball because you have these weapons. You have Robbie as a weapon. You have Paul as a weapon. It's not Vinny, necess- Vinny is like I said, not necessarily to lead the demons though, just as a quarterback in general. Still Carm. Still Carm. All right. All right. Okay, now you meet Como in the woods. <laughs> You're not dead. not a gun. Okay. What weapon would you need to kill him? A bulldozer. It's not a weapon. I mean, that's, that's a vehicle. Th- that's the <laughs> weapon I need. Have you ever seen the end of Lethal Weapon 3? Do you know how fast Where's... Como is? Pardon? Do you know how fast Como is? A bulldozer is very slow. He'll pick the bulldozer up with you in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah all, all I'm seeing right now is the end of Lethal Weapon 3 where uh, where Jack Travis is, is driving towards uh, Riggs <laughs> and he has to unload like that gun with uh, armor-piercing <laughs> bullets into the bulldozer. Ugh, oh, jeez. Horrible answer. <laughs> Sorry, well, Vince. Okay, um, would you rather... Uh, a trident no. would have been a good answer. No. A dragon. No. <laughs> a a dragon. surface-to-air missile would be the right there you answer. Go. There you go. Okay, not your personal opinion of them. Overall football skill, one or the other. Theo or Jamal? Jamal, I don't think we've seen the most out of him yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. Aked or Kish? Aked. Nato Pews or S- Sam? Okay. Or Robbie Robinson? Robbie Robinson. Pat Jerome or Ryan Lelanowski? Past Pat Jerome or present Pat Jerome? Doesn't matter. I would go with past okay. Pat Jerome then. Past Pat Jerome, okay. Yeah, yeah. past Pat Jerome. All right. JC Mercil or Vinny Galano? JC Mercil, uh, very, very underrated player. <laughs> very underrated. And last one, Bashara or Lever? Which Bashara? But oh, I'm Matt. Gonna, I'm Gladiators, gonna go with, Matt. I'm going to go with uh, Lever. All right. Done. We're done. With that in mind, we're going to take a quick break uh, just to revive all you guys out of your snooze, and then we're going to come back with our predictions. Call on the Audible has been brought to you by the English Montreal School Board's DEAL program. Distance education for all learners will allow you to obtain your high school diploma or prerequisites for stage up or vocational studies from the comfort of your own home. It's never too late to go back to school. Learn anywhere at your own pace and get your diploma. Call 514-788-5937 for information or visit www.distanced.ca for more details.
And you are back on The Truth. I am joined by an empty chair with a soon-to-be returning Matt Kirwak. Sorry. Who was busy... Drawing Marco. Checking his FPS stats. <laughs> every 14 minutes. Because they probably changed. I don't know. Uh, with that in mind, because we, we still have these uh, the games to recap, Legends, Gladiator, the last time they met, February 10th, Gladiator won by one, 39-38 in essentially what was last possession. Yeah. Um, this one, I, I honestly find it's going to be another tale of the FPF experience. I think that OPUs is going to be huge in this game. Just More more huge than having um, one interception and four touchdowns the last time they met? No, he's going to exploit them again. He's probably going to do the exact same numbers. That's what I'm calling. Same numbers. Four TDs. You can try to cover them. I don't think he'll be able to. With with his uh, competitive speed, as he calls it. Yeah, with yeah, competitive. <laughs> That's what he calls it. Without Nardone on your D. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just I don't see it being close. I'm, I don't think it's going to be a close. I'm I'm tending to lean the same way as you. This game was really close. Losing out Vince Nardone, um, Corey Pecker. Is going to be a little bit more limited in what he has, both offensively and defensively. Whereas this is where the the gladiator tend to shine in these sort of matchups as they get deeper into the into the set, into the playoffs. So. Offensively, I think Corey can manage without Nardone. He has little hands, but <laughs> but defensively, Frank's going to exploit the whole of Vince. I, I, I think that's what Frank's going to aim can, for. Can you rephrase that, rephrase that question, please? No words as you went on. <laughs> that phrase. Between your small hands and the whole on Vince. <laughs> Exploiting Vince's <laughs> hole. <laughs> he buys his football gloves at Baby Gap. Okay. okay. That's it. Um, so we're both in agreement here that uh, we see Gladiator winning this one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's very interesting because both of the games in Division 2, the last time they met, were really close. ONS 33 over Lemus Yasha 30. The last time these two teams played each other, um, Kevin Wyeth went 14 for 33. Surprisingly, similar stats. Uh, Nicola Chentoma went 16 for 28. The difference Is was. Payson with no stats in that game? That's, was he there? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Defensive. Interesting. That is very interesting. These stats don't add up, though. <laughs> they never do. No, they <laughs> never do. Never uh, do. Wait, let me guess, was that game at Hey Bear? Uh, it was Division 2. Mokan! Once I again. Know. I, know, I can't tell from here. <laughs> they definitely do not add up. Oh, and I said 33 points on 4 TDs. <laughs> <laughs> Even at 8 points a shot, you're still not... And Kev didn't three. rush? Pro? No. Uh, no, two? no. That's weird. With that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, Payson didn't have a catch. Which, he was the receiver of the year. Yes, he was. Um... Very, very, very solid player. I picked him when we still did fantasy pools. He was one of my number one picks. Uh, in we need to bring that back, by the way. Spring yeah, is the time to do it. Definitely. If you get me unlazy, and I'll do it. Un no, that's not happening. It's not happening. Um, <laughs> with with that in mind, what what do Lemsu Shad have to do? Play their defense. It's going to be all about the defense. It's Bebo is going to. I predict Bebo picking off Wyeth. I said it to Marco this week, and that's going to be the factor. Because you can score it with on ONS's D. Even with Nick being struggling like he does, I think he's still going to be able to manage the score. So they just have to stop Wyeth, which is easier said than done. But I, the, the more you, you talk about this, the more I tend to sway your way. It's, it's easy to go with Kevin and his experience and how offensively powered ONS are. However, with that in mind, uh, if LMC can get one stop, possibly two stops on... Um, I'd say a stop with a pick and a stop on turnover, turnover on downs... Is the game. Is the game. I'm, I'm going to definitely go ahead and agree with you on and that. And it's definitely possible. It's not... Uh, with that defense, their defense is huge. They're huge. And they're fast. It's doable. Demons, Flagmo Sack, when they played it, faced off in the regular season, Demons went 0-2 against Flagmo Sack, including the very famous game where they, they Vince's lost. Vince's favorite game. Yeah, it's everyone's favorite. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's uh, Jacques Voigt's favorite game. Oh, is it? Oh, I, I think Jacques Voigt needed new pants on the, on the sidelines <laughs> after, after witnessing that. Yeah, well, when you lose to five guys, not the restaurant. <laughs> I always lose to five guys. <laughs> <laughs> You always lose to five games, yeah. 
I don't know. But I, like I said, if demons come out with the same game plan that they did last time without drinking, it's going to be a hell of a lot closer than it was. That's for damn sure. It, it would be interesting to see as well, because Flag Malasak will come out with a full roster. Hopefully. Continue. You don't know that. Yeah. Do you know how nonchalant these guys are? This is it, this is just the fun leftover for them after uh, CIS, to be fair. But w with that in mind, how do you see this game going? I haven't even thought of that. Um, I'm going to go flag the sack by one touchdown. I, I think... At the end of the game. Yeah, I agree with you as well. It, this game is going to be a lot closer than we think it's going to be. Yeah. The Demons are going to show up to play. However, there will be that one mistake, that, that key error that will cost the Demons the game in this one. And flag the sack are going to take it. I think so too. And I with that in mind, we've been building up to... The most fun game on the docket. You, for anyone who's listening, so for the three of you that are listening, <laughs> if you have nothing to do Sunday night, come to Lachine. It's gonna be it's gonna be an incredible game. There's gonna be so much chirp. Um, this is a game that's gonna be meriting as much of an audience as possible because it's it's definitely gonna deliver. D Boys, Montreal's finest. D Boys also zero and two the same week as in the other matches. Spooky. For those of you who everyone heard you right, I don't have to repeat. I don't care. Playoff, <laughs> playoffs is a new game. We are beyond amped up for this game. We have our plans, and we know their plans. Do your plans include uh, rushing Kevin Wyeth and clubbing him on his cast arm? That would be stupid of me. I'm going to avoid his cast arm as much as I can. Plus, I like Kevin, so I'm not going to try and hurt Correct. him. Rajdi is a different story, but Kevin I won't try and hurt him. So, um, because you're playing in this game and Pease is so close by, I want to I wanna put the onus on Pease right now. Can I get you over here? Sure. Let's do it. So, hypothetically, in, in Bizarro World, you play on D-Boys. What is your... Never what is your <laughs> Never happened. No. What is your game plan <laughs> to upset Montreal's <laughs> Finest? To upset Montreal's Finest, uh, honestly, it's, it's, it's difficult. You got, you got to hope for a turnover. You need to... I go out and and score every drive. I think honestly, when I looked at the teams in this division heading into the season, I thought if there was a team to dethrone um, Montreal's finest, I thought it would be D Boys going into the season. I, I honestly talked about them. it's it's a great roster as much as it's I not know, too late yet. By the way, what it's not too late. It's not too late. I just want to throw it out there that we have five turnovers against them this year. I know, absolutely no, but that's the thing. Is no, that, hope for a turnover. Jamal Gittins is our turnover. <laughs> that's, that's also true. No, but I'm saying like, but <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I would, I would much rather the Jordan McLaren, the one-handed. Yeah. Then that's again, he only then. has one hand, anyways. That's six. Then I think we have this year. That being said, yeah. playoffs are a different, are a different beast. Is, is Montreal's fans just just hit another level when it comes to playoffs. Obviously. Yeah. So what I, what I think it'll it'll come down to. It'll be just a, an awesome level of execution on both teams. Um, I have one other question for you. Why do I even bring you on if you're not going to be offensive? All right. Matt, I think you're a jerk. You Why should probably Marco? shave your face. I don't know, because you're here. Oh. Shave your face once in a while, you I just hobo. Did. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> one more beautiful piece of information. D-Boys are the only team to play Montreal's finest um, to be basically within a score in both of their games. And and that's that's what I was gonna build to is is honestly honestly I, I I it's tough to imagine that game going the same way three times. Um, I think this is the season when Charles Finest loses, and I think it it goes to D boys. It almost feels like the championship happens this week between the, those two teams. We Vince Vince and I said said time and time again. Uh, no disrespect to the teams playing in Conference A, but con the, the winner, whoever wins Conference B, will will win the championship. Yeah, well, that's, that's kind of how I feel as well. Well, when we beat yeah, Montreal's fine. Vince is laughing on me, but uh, whatever. How about you uh, don't be weak and get hurt? Um, <laughs> oh, wow. There you go, offensive. There we go. <laughs> was that the other question or was that it? That's perfect. It would be a pity if you did... Like it would Play be for D-Boys? Yeah, it would it'd be a pity game where we were 9-0 and... Oh and didn't care for the rest. Hey, Mason. You can snap. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. They're, they're cons yeah, I'm just they're kidding. consistent snaps, at least. But, but like, just, just don't target them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm ready. Yeah, I We're am ready. Too. Um, I, I think that it's it's definitely going to be the most fun that the league is going to see in a It'll while. It'll be most good. And most good. 
we, we did our predictions as we went. Great. So with that in mind, uh, we hope to see you there. Hopefully someone films that game, by the way. I would watch that over and over. Where's Ryan? Uh, no, he's playing, though, but he's playing. he has other teams still in the playoffs. Yeah, so he'll be around. Here's something. Ryan. Ryan, are you still awake? Are you watching our show? <laughs> with that in mind, I really thank you for, for coming in while Vince was, as please put it, too weak to show up. Um, we miss him nonetheless. Sure Hopefully we'll find, we'll find a way to incorporate all of us at one point, whether it's at the, the road show. If you're I'll out. be in it either way. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, That's right, Kevin. I know you're watching. And that Listen. is the truth. That is the truth. Thank you.